All right, welcome everyone. Today we're very happy to have Mark Mezze for uh, today, today's kind of seminar from uh, Stony Brook. Mark has uh, done a lot, um, a number of major contributions in high energy physics and also plants matter. Um, he's uh, he developed techniques to build non Fermi liquid phases uh, holographically. He's also um, worked on on studying monopole operators in conformal field theory, and on the the, um, the famous TT bar deformation. Um, and he's also an expert on entanglement, uh, and in particular, the spread of entanglement in chaotic theories. Uh, and today he'll tell us about chaos, um, and his title is EFTs for Quantum Chaos. You can go ahead, Mark. Thank you very much uh, for this nice introduction and the opportunity to speak here. Um, and so my title is Effective Field Theories for Quantum Chaos, and uh, it will be a uh, an overview of uh, work done um, over the last couple of years with this list of collaborators. Um, and please uh, ask questions uh, throughout this talk, uh, either uh, and if, either for clarification or, or something that uh, that is tangential. Uh, there's not much of an agenda for, for the talk, so I don't necessarily need to finish everything. Um, so um, the topic uh, of today's uh, discussion will be quantum chaos. Um, chaos in uh, dynamical systems has dramatically reshaped how we think about uh, classical mechanics. Uh, uh, we associate chaos with the butterfly effect, uh, which in Lorenz's words uh, is, uh, the, is that the approximate present does not uh, approximately uh, predict the future. And uh, chaos in classical physics eliminated the Laplacian fantasy of deterministic predictability. It had it led to the development of ergodic theory, uh, and through that, uh, the foundations of statistical mechanics. And we expect uh, that uh, quantum chaos will similarly reshape our view of quantum theory. Uh, and uh, there's current intense developments uh, happening uh, at the intersection of uh, several branches of theory, um, uh, which are all connected uh, through this uh, strange three-way bridge uh, of quantum chaos. So in condensed matter, new phases of matter at finite energy density are analyzed, and there's explicit experimental control uh, uh, over real-time quantum dynamics. In quantum information theory, uh, chaotic time evolution is regarded as quantum computation. And the notion of quantum information scrambling has been very influential. Um, I'm coming at this problem from the high energy point of view, where we are interested in chaos uh, because we believe that the quantum physics of black holes is chaotic. And interestingly, some of the probes uh, that we consider for chaotic systems have a stringy flavor to them as I will elaborate briefly uh, during the talk. Um, so the current status of the field is that the variety of phenomena and signatures have been analyzed uh, in a few special example systems. And the goal of my research is to, first of all, find more generic examples and to organize uh, this, the, this variety of phenomenology uh, using the EFT philosophy uh, and uh, possibly to unify uh, all this in one coherent framework. Um, so here's the outline of the talk. I will continue the introduction through the discussion of uh, the familiar topic of hydrodynamics and why uh, we are motivated to go beyond it. And the bulk of the talk uh, will consist of the discussion of the quantum butterfly effect and the closely related ball skipping phenomenon that I will uh, introduce. And in the remaining time, uh, I will discuss some aspects of entanglement dynamics. Uh, I've worked on this extensively, uh, but you may have already heard me talk about this. And so uh, I'll focus on more on, on newer work. Uh, but I, I will try to emphasize how uh, some aspects of entanglement dynamics is related to 
to these other topics and I will end with some future directions. Is there any question about this broad brush introduction so far? Okay. If not, let's continue with hydrodynamics, uh, which is uh, a ubiquitous uh, theory in both physics and mathematics. In physics, it describes the, uh, some important aspects in, in stars, uh, turbulence, uh, in particle colliders, uh, heavy ion collisions, uh, transporting condensed matter. And in mathematics, one of the most important open problems is the Navier-Stokes existence and smoothness problem. From the high energy point of view, hydrodynamics is a, in particular relativistic hydrodynamics, is a systematic affective field theory uh, that uh, computes uh, correlation functions at finite energy density. The physical idea behind it um, is that most excitations uh, of the system are expected to relax in some local equilibration time. Um, which is of order inverse temperature generically. Uh, and uh, if you have a weakly coupled system, this may get uh, divided by uh, some uh, weak coupling uh, scale um, or weak coupling constant uh, G. Uh, but after you wait long enough, the system will uh, be near thermal equilibrium. And from then on, hydrodynamics will govern its dynamics. So, this generic expectation is true um, uh, for most excitations, uh, but there are exceptions. Uh, conserved densities at very long wavelengths uh, are approximately conserved. And so these are the slow degrees of freedom that are uh, captured by the EFT. So if we go with momenta uh, times this local uh, equilibration time uh, to so form a dimensionless combination and take this uh, to be a lot smaller than one, uh, then from conservation, uh, these, these can, such excitations cannot decay fast. And so uh, these, these become the, the important degrees of freedom. And uh, so a key step is to rewrite. Uh, so here I'm writing the zero A component uh, of the stress tensor and I'm, uh, assuming that this is the, these are the only conserved densities in the system. And uh, this can be easily extended to include, uh, for example, currents uh, for global charges. Uh, but let's just stick to this simplest case. Uh, so the next step is to rewrite the stress tensor in fluid variables, the energy density, pressure, and the four velocities. So here I explicitly wrote down the leading order in gradient expansion terms, and I, I suppressed uh, terms that contains gradients. Um, and this is a systematic long distance late time expansion in the number of gradients. And uh, once we have these variables, then their dynamics comes from uh, the conservation of the stress tensor. Question. I had a question, sorry. Uh, why do you factor T like that? Like so far you said well there's just currents yeah uh and those currents are slow what is the next uh what is the reason for thinking that t should be quadratic oh so luca actually has a very nice paper where he uh, describes fluid dynamics not just from this conventional point of view but where he uh, really just keeps these guys uh, as his degrees of freedom and rewrites, uh, uh, for example, TAB, uh, which are not conserved densities in an expansion in terms of, of these guys. So this is just a change, convenient change of variables. Um, so you need- But need... you're going to tell me that you obey some local equation, right? Uh, yeah, so I plug in this ex, ex, uh, expression into the conservation equation and I get uh, an equation of motion. But this is just a change of variables uh, from T0A to the fluid velocities and, uh, and the one other quantity which you can take as the temperature as a function of space time. You're asking why, I, I mean, the underlying locality of the theory is why I'm looking to write down the local equation of motion. No, I, I guess I'm just trying to understand uh, 
so are you telling me that there's no physical content in changing from t to u that it's just a mathematical trick or yeah. are you telling me that there's an additional effective field theory hypothesis or conclusion that is expressed in the change of variables no so you you could uh, skip this step and uh, just use t0a as your degrees of freedom and work with them and rewrite rewrite tab uh, in in terms of t0a and its uh, polynomials and derivatives you could do that equivalently so this is just historical convenience that we use these very okay okay uh luca do you agree with this yeah i agree and also it, it makes lawrence covariance more manifest so it, it can be a nice way to write things mm -hmm. than, to, than to work with t0i but yeah. okay um and so this can be used uh, this hydrodynamics can be used uh, to compute uh, correlation functions of conserved densities as follows. Uh, so we take thermal equilibrium where uh, the temperature is constant and the forward velocity is also constant throughout the system, uh, and then perturb this uh, by a source and calculate the classical response to this source. This gives us a retarded Green's function. And uh, this is the prediction of hydrodynamics uh, to leading order for the Green's function. Then you can also in include loops. And here I wrote down uh, the retarded energy density two-point function uh, for small p and omega. Uh, it contains um, a linearly dispersing pole uh, with a small decay width. Uh, and this is the sound mode in a, in a fluid. Sorry, Mark, I just didn't quite understand. How, how did you get GR? You have equations of motion, but how do you get an action? You uh, introduce sources. You don't need an action to do, perform this computation. You just introduce a source, and this is a response to the source. You're doing linear response theory. Does that... uh, excuse me. Yes. This, uh, this type of the... Is, is, is the many body system uh, single? Uh, what kind of the system is that? So it's believed that uh, hydrodynamics applies to many body quantum systems which have uh, uh, trans, I mean, which have uh, conserved energy and momentum. Uh, and they are, and if they are chaotic, so they're only conserved degree uh, quantities are, are these, uh, then hydrodynamics uh, gives uh, their effective description at finite energy density. So, so far, so I... and the, yeah, and this, the pose of the, this retarded the propagator here uh, also have uh, the same interpretation as in many body we have. In many body we interpret them as a excited excitations energy. So, uh, we can have the same interpretation just by substituting the speed of the uh, sound or perturbation yes. with the speed of the light. Uh, I think the, the interpretation of, of the diagrammatic is the same. Yes, this is a speed of sound. This is a long way, long lived excitation, collective excitation of the system. Uh, and for example, if you imagine a quantum field theory, you th which is chaotic, take it at finite energy density, you expect that the energy density two-point function will have contain this uh, And for example, in conformal field theory, this speed of sound is not the speed of light, it is, uh, is smaller by order one factor. Um, so, so, this is, so far I explained how you compute uh, energy density two-point function, but hydrodynamics is, um, is good for more than this, and again, uh, uh, there's a very nice paper by Luca where he articulates this point of view. Um, so if, if your theory had a microscopic operator of some spin L or L, uh, then you can express this uh, schematically as a number of derivatives acting on the stress tensor. This is the leading piece. And then you, are, you have subleading pieces, uh, which would contain polynomials uh, of T and polynomials of derivatives 
uh, so that the transformation Lorentz transformation laws uh, uh, are are obeyed. And so you have a replacement rule. And if you're interested in the two point function, for example, of this O, uh, then what you do uh, is uh, first use this replacement rule and then use the Green's functions from the previous slide to obtain a systematic long distance late time expansion uh, for this two point function. So hydrodynamics does more for you than just to predict uh, the correlators of conserved densities. And uh, one more thing that will be useful to keep in mind, although this talk won't be focusing on gravitational aspects too much, uh, but through ADS-CFT, uh, uh, hydrodynamics in strongly coupled uh, quant holographic quantum field theories uh, is uh, dual uh, to the gravitational dynamics of bumpy black holes in ABS spacetime. By bumpy, I mean uh, they have horizons which are uh, which deviate from spherical through long wavelength perturbations, or planar, uh, but through long wavelength perturbations. And this is just a cartoon uh, that uh, depicts such a spacetime. Okay, so. Uh, I will argue that we actually are interested in going beyond. So hydrodynamics is already great. It universally applies uh, to all chaotic systems. It captures correlation functions in, a, in an EFT expansion of long distance and late time. Uh, but to probe uh, chaotic systems in more details in, in some more fine grained manner, we will, I will argue that we need to go beyond uh, hydrodynamics and the gravitational picture will actually uh, make this uh, abundantly clear. So, um, in particular, since the 50s, it's been understood uh, that uh, chaotic dynamics uh, imprints itself on the statistics of energy eigenvalues, uh, which uh, is uh, described uh, by ran or believed to be described by random matrix theory. So, you can regard random matrix theory as an effective field theory or effective description of spectral correlations. And uh, recent developments in ADS-CFT uh, have taught us that uh, these spectral correlations can be captured by multi-boundary geometries in, in, in the gravitational description. These are clearly beyond uh, the physics of just a single black hole horizon in ADS. And so this illustrates that uh, we need to go beyond hydrodynamics to, to capture uh, such a fine grained probe of chaos. Um, uh, as we already alluded to, uh, uh, a universal probe of chaotic dynamics uh, is the study of entanglement entropy uh, away from equilibrium. And uh, there, uh, in synergy with uh, work in random quantum circuits and condensed matter, uh, I developed an effective description uh, of this process, so the dynamics of entanglement entropy uh, in, in, in out of equilibrium setups. So this is illustrated by this cooling lava cartoon. Uh, and uh, with Viretta, we also provided a unification of this effective the theory with hydrodynamics. Uh, and the gravitation picture for this uh, is that we have a collapsing black hole spacetime uh, that captures uh, the evolving wave function uh, from out to equilibrium, settling to equilibrium. And this is probed uh, by extremal surfaces. Uh, the Ryu Takanagi surface is computing uh, entanglement entropy. These probe behind the black hole horizon. Uh, which is uh, this 45 degree line on the panel's diagram. And the extreme on surfaces are these uh, green and purple lines. Uh, this is, again, uh, clearly beyond just the dynamics of, of the black hole horizon, since we go beyond, behind the horizon. Uh, and so this, again, illustrates that to uh, probe uh, these systems uh, in, in this fine grained manner, uh, we have to go beyond hydro. And finally, um, the most modern probes of proposed modern probes of chaos 
are the quantum butterfly effect and the Paul skipping phenomenon that will be the focus of this talk. And uh, these are captured uh, by the physics of shock waves uh, of, uh, in, of ADS black holes in the gravity description. Uh, these are again, uh, uh, clearly not uh, long wavelength excitations of the horizon, but instead like, very localized ones. And uh, this is uh, again beyond hyperdynamics. So um, I will be discussing uh, progress towards novel effective field theories uh, that captured chaotic dynamics. Uh, so why EFTs at all? Uh, in this regime of uh, finite energy density, uh, real-time uh, quantum dynamics, there's no conventional small parameter. And to make uh, analytical progress, uh, we need to introduce one by hand by going to a particular uh, kinematic regime, uh, which in hydro uh, was the long wavelength uh, large time uh, regime. And uh, we will do the same for these other uh, phenomena and probes. Uh, and uh, the next step is to identify the relevant dynamical variables. In hydro, that was the temperature uh, and uh, for velocity as a function of space time, and uh, find the laws governing them in this kinematic regime. In hydro, that was the conservation. And uh, an important uh, uh, virtue of this approach uh, may be that we can find interplay between these phenomena through the lens of the effective description, which may be hidden in microscopic variables. And the uh, uh, word of caution is that uh, what I'm presenting now is very much work in progress, uh, but there are already uh, interesting results uh, that I think are worth reporting. So this concludes the, the introduction. Is there any question? Excuse me, you mentioned about the Ryu Takarinagi proposal for to calculate entanglement entropy. So in some systems, as I know, for example, Kitai model, one dimension of quantum wire superconducting, you see obviously the chaotic behavior using calculating the entropy. You have a Hamiltonian and just calculate the entanglement entropy. So do you think it is possible to track this, uh, this chaotic behavior by studying some chaotic uh, minimal surface. Yes, that, the, that's, gonna be, that's exactly going to be the uh, statement of, of, of when I discuss that, that while, mm -hmm. while you, well, um, yeah, let me just say that you, of course, when you're analyzing holographic theories, then you're analyzing very, very special systems. And so it cannot literally translate into uh, some quantitative prediction in the Kitaev chain. Uh, but uh, if you can find some universal aspects of entanglement dynamics that applies to any chaotic systems by studying holographic systems and then make it, then identifying uh, the relevant kinematic regime, identifying the relevant dynamical variables and the laws governing them, then you have a chance of uh, finding uh, some useful effective field theory that will be applicable even to the system uh, that you're talking about, which clearly doesn't have a higher dimensional holographic tool. So that's the philosophy. It's a great question. Um, okay, so uh, let me now discuss the butterfly effect, quantum butterfly effect. So classical butterfly effect is the exponential sensitivity to initial data. And in recent years, uh, we've learned that the QFT or many body generalization is that simple operators uh, evolve into complex swans. And here I'm illustrating it uh, on an example of a spin chain. I'm acting uh, on the origin uh, with a simple operator V uh, at the origin. And then uh, I evolve to time T its support has spread to three lattice sites, then in time 2t to five lattice sites, and this spreading continues, this ballistic spreading continues uh, uh, in time. And uh, it has been understood that, that uh, uh, 
this spreading is diagnosed by a so-called out of time order commutator, commutator squared actually. So uh, a spreading operator is an extremely complicated object. We need a diagnostic, uh, which is just a number. So we use a correlation function, but a very exotic one. So I will call this uh, uh, C, T, and X. So it depends on uh, a space-time point. We want to detect how the operator V inserted at the origin spreads. We do that by taking its commutator with an arbitrary oper local operator W at space time point T and X. Is, if, they, if V hasn't spread there, then the commutator will be zero. But if it has spread there, then the commutator is non-zero. We square it to get a positive quantity and take the expectation value in a thermal state to get the number. Uh, now, this quantity can be computed in ADS-CFT in a hydrodynamic regime, hydrodynamic-like regime, where you go with T and X uh, to be to uh, times and distances a lot larger than beta. Uh, and we get the following simple answer. So it, it's a four point function. So it's appropriate that it's suppressed by one over n squared. Uh, and it has a simple exponential profile in space time. It grows exponentially with time and decays exponentially in space. Uh, this expression is only valid uh, for relatively early times when this exponential growth suppresses the one over n squared uh, uh, suppression characteristic of, of large N systems that have holographic duals, then this whole expansion breaks down. But in other systems, such as spin chains, uh, it's been understood how, uh, what kind of space time profile this uh, out of OTOC or out of time ordered commutator squared uh, should look like. So here I'm sketching that. Uh, so inside uh, the light cone, if our system has an exact light cone, uh, or outside the light cone, it's exactly zero. Um, inside the light cone, it starts out small, and then it has a very sharp profile. So this is a density plot. It saturates to its maximal possible value inside the cone-like region, uh, which is actually narrower than the uh, microscopic light cone. And the slope of this region uh, is called the butterfly velocity. So the butterfly effect, the quantum butterfly effect is, is the saturation of this OTOC and it happens inside this cone-like region. And then uh, apart from that, it has a very sharp profile. It, as you can see in ADS-CFT, it grows exponentially in time. And uh, this offset of the orange region from the origin is called the scrambling time. It's uh, in this example, it's is as log n. So when you plug in uh, log n for t, uh, then you get that this c is order one. Mark, can you clarify in the OTOC definition, is that also for QFT, when even though the points are coincident? And yeah, that's a good, good question that I, so for QFT, this is impressionistic. You have to point split. And you, the way people usually do that is that they uh, place the operators uh, uniformly along the Euclidean circle, uh, which is this uh, thermal circle that you have. But the answer would be on that. Yeah, so, so how, like I mean, how do you, when you draw these like sh features of speeds and so forth, what is being plotted really? It's believed that uh, the answers are independent uh, so of, of these details, but nothing uh, has been sharply proven. Uh, it, there are numerical results in uh, spin systems. Uh, and even there, it's kind of debated uh, whether- wait, wait, wait. How can they be independent of these uh, of the regulator if when I take it to zero, it blows up? There's an order of limits issue. So you go, yeah. So it, I'm saying that it's independent of how much you smear. For example, this exponential growth is believed to be independent of whether you place the operators along the thermal circle uniformly or just split them uh, by, an, by, an, by a small amount and then uh, do the calculation at finite splitting and then take, take it to be zero. I mean, the prefactor 
could could have dependence on on these uh, uh, regularization pr procedure, but not not the features that I see. Interested. That's the the claim is that exponential is universal. I see. Yes. And is there? I mean, to what extent can this quantity be computed in any quantum field theory examples that are outside of ADS CFT? So it's been calculated in weakly coupled large M theories uh, through summing an infinite number of, of Simon diagrams. Um, and uh, so that's been done. And uh, apart from that, it's been done numerically in, in spin chains or in the SYK model where you don't have the spatial structure, you just have uh, uh, the time domain to investigate. It's all, it, also been- is it in any way easier than just calculating a four-point function? It's it's a simple. It's somehow a restriction of the four-point function. Is it in any way easier than calculating a generic four-point function? So in conformal field theory, this is uh, I or this is very similar to something called the Reggie conformal Reggie regime. Um, so there are some simplifications there, uh, but it's still an extremely hard. Uh, thing to calculate for example since it's out of time ordered uh, it's not captured by hydrodynamics even though i told you that hydrodynamics captures correlation functions uh, that's that was for normal high uh, time ordered correlation functions this is not captured by that so it's somewhat simpler than the most generic four point function but it's still extremely hard to compute and there are only a few examples where it's been computed Okay, and another question, I guess, on this slide is, do we have a, a definition of what we meant by simple operators for QFT? Are we talking about any local operator or is it some, I mean, you know, we don't really, in an abstract QFT, we don't really have like the, the fundamental field or something like that. Yeah, so in conformal field theory, it's believed that if you take, a, uh, so, and imagine a large N conformal field theory, so large gen, central charge, then it's believed that if you just take a, a low dimension operator, then it will suffice. Uh, and this is in, in quantum chaos language. It's believed that, that the same uh, defini technical definition of simple is that uh, ETH, the eigenstate thermalization hypothesis, applies to single, simple operators. And these are the operators that you're supposed to be talking about here. So in, in spin chains, that would be any operator on, on one lattice side. In quantum field theory, uh, it hasn't been analyzed too much, but in conformal field theory, it would be uh, local operators with order one scaling dimension. Great, thanks. Could I squeeze in one quick question, yeah. uh, piggybacking on Clay's question here? So if if the regulator also appears in the coefficient in front of the exponent in the C, if we want to think about uh, the scrambling time as when the C is becoming order one, does that mean we should think of the scrambling time as depending on the UV cutoff as well? Does that diverge somehow? I, I would have thought not, but. Uh... So, so no, because the, so the question is, so, you see the scrambling time is the, defined where this thing saturates, but it, it, the, satu the, the value where it saturates will also depend on your, uh, on, on your point splitting. And so I think these two effects cancel each other. Uh, the, it's just that this whole graph will be multiplied by something, uh, some, some expression that depends on your point splitting, but doesn't depend on TNX. So it's okay, just great. an un unimportant coefficient. Great. Um, okay. So it's great that this been this was computed in in ADS CFT, but it's even better uh, that Madison Schenker Stanford proved that this object C, appropriately defined as we discussed, uh, uh, cannot grow faster than exponentially in any quantum system. Uh, and so the, the exponential growth is characterized by Yapunov exponent uh, in analogy with the classical uh, case. And this is bounded from above by two pi over beta, uh, where I set h bar to one, if I 
kept h bar, then uh, it would be in the denominator. And uh, there's, this is a purely quantum effect. Its classical limit is, is trivial. So it says that it is one over h bar. If you take the classical limit, then it doesn't say anything. Uh, so uh, this has uh, generated a lot of uh, attention uh, because it's some uh, purely quantum many body uh, uh, understanding of chaos. Okay. Um, so this talks about the auto growth in time. Uh, if we are interested in local systems, uh, we want to understand uh, this whole profile in space time. One way to probe that is to draw a ray of constant velocity uh, on this plot and study how the function grows in that direction. Turns out it grows exponentially in that direction as well, defining a velocity dependent Yapunov exponent. And with Sharoshi, we prove uh, a refinement of the chaos bound. Lambda v uh, is 2 pi over beta times a linear function of velocity. Um, uh, excuse me, yeah. is it possible to understand this upper bound over the uh, Lyapunov exponent classically? Is this possible? No. To realize this, oh. any classical analog for this is upper bound over the Lyapunov exponent, the Mandelstam machine for this time. Doesn't, doesn't the bound go to infinity in the classical? Yeah, the, the bound goes to infinity in the classical limit. That's what I tried to say. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, I mean, there are th thoughts that this, that this whole Yapunov growth of uh, is characteristic of some semi-classical behavior of the system, but but not but it's not it's not possible to understand this classical as far as I know. For example, we consider repulsive harmonic oscillator classical system, which is trivially chaotic, and then no. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay, I'm going a bit slow. So anyway. Um, so lambda v uh, is a measure of how chaotic the system is, as I hope to have argued. And uh, so this naturally brought the thought that maximal chaos is associated to gravity. Indeed, if we calculate uh, lambda v in, in the ADS-CFT example that I gave you, uh, we get that it saturates the bound that I wrote down. Uh, and uh, that the uh, SYK model of Sajdevier and Kitaev uh, at strong coupling uh, is maximally chaotic and solvable in, in the sense discussed above has generated huge excitement and the expectation that it would have a gravitational dual and indeed that somewhat unconventional dual uh, was found uh, in the guise of uh, Jekyll Teitelbaum gravity. So this is the situation which I previewed in the introduction. Uh, so we have a very special system, uh, gravitational systems, also the SYK model in the, in the strongly coupled uh, limit, which we understand rather well, uh, but generic systems are, are away from maximal chaos. Uh, and uh, we would also like to understand them. And uh, that's uh, the research I'm, I'm invested in. Uh, their duals are uh, expected to be uh, stringy theories if, if they have a holographic dual. And okay, these are vague words, but in the case of uh, any planar super young mist theory, uh, this can be made very precise. Uh, this function lambda v uh, can be deduced from integrability, and we indeed find that. that that away from maximal tough coupling, uh, lambda v deviates from the maximal possible value, and uh, it's given by stringy effects in, in its uh, holographic world. But I won't be talking about today about uh, super young mills. Instead, uh, our uh, chosen system uh, that we will analyze uh, will be a local modification of the SYK model. Uh, so let me sketch that. Um, it's called the SYK chain. Uh, so we put uh, many SYK models in, along one chain. We regard each of these SYK models uh, as one uh, D 
degree of freedom, one lattice site, and then we connect them uh, in a special way, it's the same way as SYK model works. So SYK model is the model of n Majorana fermions, uh, and uh, the Hamiltonian is uh, constructed as follows: we take every uh, pair of or every group of four of these fermions and multiply them so multiply them together and multiply them with a random coefficient uh, j i j j k l m and uh, we construct a local version of the s y k model the same manner we take two guys from one lattice site another two from a nearest neighbor uh, multiply them together multiply them with a random coefficient and add them to the hamiltonian once you add these up, you get your model, which you can solve uh, by doing an average over disorder, disorder being these random coefficients, uh, and uh, getting a collective field description, which can be treated semi-classically. So in my work with Cho and Sharoshi, uh, we consider the further generalization in which the fermions don't interact in groups of four, but in groups of Q, and then we also took the large Q limit. The virtue of this uh, is that uh, this model can be solved for any value of the coupling, which we choose to be between zero and one. Zero is the free theory. One is the strongly coupled, maximally chaotic theory. But we can solve this model uh, for any value of G. And uh, this helps us in going away from maximal chaos. And this is why we are analyzing this model and not some other model, because here we have analytic control for all values of the coupling. Okay, Sorry, so what, what, is, what is G again? Uh, G is uh, some dimensionless coupling. Uh, if you are familiar with SYK, it has a dimensionful coupling that controls the uh, variance of these uh, random coefficients. Uh, you can make this dimensionless uh, with the temperature. So beta J is the usual dimensionless coupling that you consider. And you convert this dimensionless coupling to another one with, which is in the, which is just the convention and it's between zero and one. Zero is the weak coupling limit, G is the- okay, So it's, it's just, a, so it's just the variance of the average of the J's. Yes, dimensionless. Yeah, okay, okay. Um, so, and, um, the, the, do the J's and the J primes have the same variance of G? Um, yeah, so that's an, uh, that's an additional uh, coupling constant, the ratio of, of their variances, but it doesn't modify the results at all. So I just set, set them to one uh, okay. in the, in this, in the, for the sake of this talk, but uh, you, okay. can, you can vary it if you want. It doesn't change anything. And one more question, do, do the... Um... Are the J's and the J primes um, chosen to be the same, or do you separately, you separately uh, disorder you average? Choose. Yeah, you hmm? separately disorder average. So every every lattice site you choose uh, uh, separate J's, and every inter side coupling you see, you choose separate J's. Okay, thank you. Great. Okay, so. Uh, here's the result. Uh, you can do every, every calculation analytically for G equals uh, 0 0.8. Uh, so this is a rather strong coupling. Uh, the bound on lambda of V, so I said beta to be 2 pi. So the bound on lambda of V starts from uh, 1 and uh, grows. So this is this dashed orange line and grows, goes down linearly uh, to 0 at the butterfly velocity. And you can see that the actual curve, the black curve that we get from the computation is below the bound. Uh, and the remarkable feature is that above some velocity, so as we go towards the edge of the butterfly cone, uh, it saturates uh, the bound above some critical velocity V star. This is what we see. The explanation of, uh, of this behavior is that in this regime of velocities, uh, the stress tensor uh, dominates in the sense of, uh, of the exchange in four point function. Uh, stress tensor dominates chaos and its contribution to lambda of V is very simple. It's linear in velocity and it uh, comes with this uh, universal two pi over beta coefficient. So this is the same expression that we got for 
uh, in the bound. So that's the explanation. If the stress tensor dominates, then, then you get uh, bound saturation and maximal chaos. If we crank down G, uh, then uh, this V star uh, goes away. And for example, G equals a half, uh, we just get uh, this curve. It never saturates the bound. Um, and this is not just a feature of a SYK chain. This is the same thing you would get in any cost for super youngness if you use results of integrability. Okay, so this is what I wanted to tell you about uh, uh, out of time order commutators uh, and their exponential growth. Um, and we see the benefits of analyzing this uh, local version of the SYK model. We can analyze uh, these correlators in space time and we can probe. Uh, the dynamics and discover uh, that uh, if we go towards the edge of the butterfly cone, we can enhance chaos and make it maximally chaotic, at least if we are at strong enough couple. Okay, and then the remaining time uh, I'll be uh, talking about the closely related uh, proposed new diagnostic of quantum chaos, the so called post skipping phenomenon. So Let's go back to the beginning of the talk where we talked about hydrocorrelators. So as a reminder, here's the energy density uh, correlation function. Now in systems where you don't have momentum conservation, such as our SYK chain, which is a discrete chain and it, in no sense uh, does it have an emergent translation symmetry in the IR. So we have to uh, assume that the only conserved charge is actually the energy. Uh, the transport of energy density is diffusive and uh, the appropriate uh, uh, description of this is, is, a, is a diffusive correlation function. So let's focus on the, uh, on the curve of pores of these uh, Green's function. As we talked about, we get a sound pole uh, for the case of hydro. And we get a pole that uh, determines the diffusive behavior on the lower half imaginary axis dispersing quadratically at small momentum. Okay, so pole skipping talks about this curve of poles extrapolated outside of the hydrodynamic regime, so to P and omega of order one. And uh, the statement of pole skipping is that we have a curve of poles and there's another curve of zeros and they intersect at one point. And this is the pole skipping point. Uh, so at this point, the residue of this family of poles vanishes. So this is what they call pole skipping. And the proposal is uh, that this pole skipping surprisingly uh, is, uh, the pole skipping point is surprisingly correlated with data of chaos. So the proposal is that it's in omega p plane is at i times the Yapunov exponent uh, one times one over the butterfly velocity. Uh, why is this surprising? Uh, these chaotic four-point functions, as we discussed, are extremely hard to compute, whereas the, the energy density two-point function is some familiar object uh, that, we know from, that we know from transport. Uh, it's mysterious that uh, the data of chaos show up in this uh, simple uh, point, simple object. Um, and the, uh, this proposal has been tested in maximally chaotic theories and uh, uh, very non-trivial agreements have been found. But in another paper with Choi and Sharoshi, uh, we, uh, we, we soon realized that, that um, this original proposal fails uh, in non-maximally chaotic 2D CFTs. The simple reason is that the energy density two-point function is universal, is uh, independent of, uh, of the details of your CFT, only depends on the central charge to, uh, to an overall coefficient, but not all 2D CFTs are maximally chaotic. So the pole skipping proposal in its original form fails. Uh, can this be saved? Uh, our, proposal based on our work on, on, uh, on the Yapunov exponent uh, uh, was the following. Uh, so a new proposal is that uh, is the stress tensor contribution to chaos that uh, should show up uh, in post skipping and uh, not the true one. 
so uh, we saw that uh, this thing is just two pi over beta, uh, but the uh, stress sensor contribution to the butterfly velocity is actually a theory dependent uh, quantity. And Sorry, so, can you clarify what, what do you mean by the stress tensor contribution to chaos? What is yes, that? Yes, yes. So here, uh, I told you that when we get uh, the saturation uh, of the refinement of chaos bound, that yeah. the explanation of that is that in this four point function, uh, you are taking uh, the stress tensor exchange between these uh, four operators. So in an OP channel, you fuse into a stress tensor, uh -huh. contribute the con contribution coming from here. Uh, and, uh, and, that, and, and uh, you will see that uh, while here in this regime, uh, all operators contribute in this regime, it's only the stress tensor. I mean, this is, this is this computation I'm describing in in uh, conformal field theory, but the similar similar picture applies to SYK as well. Uh, and any known example that has been calculated, I'm not saying I can really define the stress tensor contribution abstractly in any theory, but in any computation that I can do, I can actually identify. So I guess I understand what you mean by in the four point function uh, in a CFT. For, I, I at least understand it there, probably another, maybe another context, but it, what was special about the stress tensor? I mean, was it that it was a low dimension operator or that it was conserved? What, what, why was it that it dominates sometimes? Um, I only have a technical answer to this uh, question. So, um, yeah, it's, it's an operator on the leading Reggie trajectory. And uh, somehow for kinematical reasons, there's a, there's a special contribution coming from it. I, I don't have a physical understanding of, of why, uh, of why, whether it's the conservation or it's been to nature or, or, or what, what it is that, that makes it uh, special. So, so here, so again, here, here are some data of, uh, coming from the stress tensor. There's this coefficient, over coefficient that is two pi over beta. This is what I'm calling lambda LT on, on, in the post skipping discussion. And there's this VBT, the stress tensor contribution to the butterfly velocity, which may or may not agree with the true butterfly velocity. And the proposal in, in our proposal for post skipping is that these are the data that show up in the energy density two-point function. So, so far, this is just a proposal that makes the previous literature consistent uh, with 2D CFT. Um, but we wanted to test this proposal uh, under some serious uh, test, and that we can do in, in this uh, large QSYK chain again, a workhorse. Uh, so we computed uh, the retarded energy density. Sorry, can, I ask, can I ask something about this proposal? So is it supposed to make sense also for systems that uh, away from large N? Well, uh, I mean, it's uh, the Yapunov exponent away from large N doesn't make much sense. So I, I Couldn't you also define it by taking your OTOC and say, looking at separated points? Um, I mean, people haven't that that was an, the original idea that maybe that's how you could see uh -huh. something like this uh, in in uh, small end systems but i'm not aware of any situation where that was a successful strategy maybe it's successful in quantum field theories in lattice systems it's not successful because you have a um, you don't have a microscopic light cone by the time you get to the growing regime, your correlation function is already too big. But it would be interesting I, I, I to didn't follow. I didn't follow. You said that the Lyapunov exponent is not defined except for at large n. Yes. Uh, the reason for that. But you're saying maybe in, in relativistic or, or in some. Maybe in relativistic. It hasn't been checked. It hasn't. Nobody has managed to see exponential growth uh, of so. The chaos bound uh, applies 
uh, but since uh, nobody has seen exponential growth uh, in in OTOC in small land systems, it's a vacuous statement uh, so far. Maybe it's the lack of effort, uh, but the but the, the reason Clay is that um, to get uh, so you need to see exponential growth. This applies in in a time window. Uh, so you have to go to bit times a uh, lot larger than uh, uh, beta, but a lot smaller than the scrambling time. Now, if these are the same order, uh, you don't have an additional parameter that you can tune, then it's meaningless to talk about exponential growth. So if you're, if you're just examining like a weakly coupled field theory, what is the scrambling time supposed to be? So weakly coupled, but finite n. Yeah, you know, lambda phi four theory for, you know, just my, my favorite weakly coupled simple field theory. Well, yeah, I, nobody has computed uh, the, the OTOC in that theory. So uh, it's hard for, so, so it should be the, the time at which the correlation function saturates to its maximal value. But I do, I think it's a, it's a, it's an, I, I don't know when, when it would actually saturate once you did the computation, like what time scale would it give you? I don't know. But sorry, if I, if I'm just a very simple minded person and wanted to uh, compute OTOC at a, in a finite N system in a conformal field theory. If I just hand you a list of operators and their scaling dimensions, can you grind it out? Like, is this something that, that the conformal bootstrap could just plug into? Say like, you know, in the Ising model, we know the dimensions of operators up to some very high dimension. We know well, lots of OP is, coefficients. You need to know the Reggie trajectory um, of, so you, it's not low dimension, it's, these low twist things but uh, yeah I think it's close so in the Ising model I think probably people could calculate I'm not aware of anybody analyzing this seriously but in condensed matter uh, when people got really excited about this thing and then tried to compute and every time they tried to compute they never saw the exponential growth because of some uh, lattice reasons, but I don't know if those reasons would, I, I think there's a chance that in QFT at small n, you could still see exponential growth, but nobody has seen it as far as I know. Okay. I see. Does the Ising model exhibit chaos given all the conservation laws? The, the 3D Ising model, yeah. surely. <laughs> yeah, I was just, yeah. right. Yeah, I mean, I guess nobody really knows, but but uh, the guess would be that the 3D Ising model does. Sure, sure. It's just all the pictures here are 2D. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, but maybe just a comment. So in your proposal, the thing on the right-hand side also probably is a bit hard to define in finite N systems um, because the analytic structure is more complicated. You don't just have poles. Yes, that's, yeah. So I... Uh, I guess maybe you're saying that this is too naive at finite and the proposal. I, I don't know. I, yeah, both sides might be harder to define maybe. Yeah. Okay. But there's a family of, still a family of poles in the, in the energy density two point function. So you could in principle follow that, right? Yeah, but they're branch cuts. Um, they're sitting on branch cuts. Uh, uh, Okay, we should, yeah. we should, yeah. let me, uh, yeah. let me just wrap up with the, with the punchline. So, um, so the reason, our reason to look into large QSYK chain uh, very seriously was, was this proposal. Um, and the, there we succeeded uh, of computing the retarded energy density two point function uh, for any value of omega and P including complex ones. Uh, we have a closed form expression, but here I'm just showing you a density plot of the absolute value of the Green's function. So uh, for, uh, so where, the, where this density plot is uh, very bright, that's where the fun absolute value is big and where it's uh, blue, uh, that's where it's small. You can see 
uh, uh, curves of uh, poles and zeros intersecting uh, at different points. But let's focus on the upper half plane. We see a curve of poles and a curve of zeros intersecting at this red point. This is for little g equals 0 0.6. I zoomed in. Uh, you clearly see uh, an intersection of two lines. And uh, it happens exactly at the point where our proposal says it would. This we have confirmed analytically for all values of the coupling. And so our proposal passes this test in, with flying colors. Um, so an important byproduct of this investigation is a closed form energy density two point function. Uh, such an object uh, is, a, is considered a landmark achievement of ADS CFT, uh, where we can compute finite temperature correlation functions of energy density at infinite of coupling. Um, uh, the, in some sense, we've done even better than this in our toy model, the large QSY K chain, since we obtained, uh, first of all, in a closed form way, not by just solving equations numerically, uh, this retarded energy density two point function and for all values of the coupling constant. And uh, so here, I, yeah, I included some slides about the, the derivation of, and what, what you need to do, but I guess uh, in the interest of time, uh, let me just skip this and, uh, and conclude with, um, with a, a summary and, uh, and uh, hints towards why an EFT description uh, of, of all what I discussed uh, may be feasible. So uh, we characterized the space-time structure of Otox in this uh, time and space uh, window. Um, it, at, early, at, at late times, but earlier than the scrambling times, uh, this function in large N systems is seen, seen to grow uh, exponentially. And we bounded this exponential growth uh, through the refinement of the chaos bound. Uh, at strong enough coupling near the edge of the butterfly cone, the stress tensor dominates chaos. It has uh, data, uh, lambda LT is two pi over beta, and there's a VBT. And this is exactly the data that shows up in the energy density retarded two point function as a post skipping point. And as a byproduct, we obtain a closed form uh, Green's function, uh, which can be used not just for post skipping purposes, but also to analyze various questions in hydrodynamics. And uh, I promised you uh, steps towards an EFT uh, of, of chaotic phenomena. We don't have an EFT to describe uh, the auto growth and the pole skipping at the moment. Uh, there exists an EFT description for maximally chaotic systems. Uh, in the SYK model, it's called the Schwarzian theory, and in, it has been generalized to higher dimensions by Blakely, Leo, and Hale, and Rosali. Uh, this, ex this EFT uh, explains pole skipping, uh, and it makes contact with hydro. Um, there are various hints that something like this should be possible also away from maximal chaos. One is, uh, one is Reggie theory, where since the 70s, uh, EFT methods have been used. Uh, but the most concrete hint is that uh, in uh, with Choi and Sharoshi and also Stryker independently, we computed uh, the exact four point function in, in uh, the SYK model, not the chain, but just one single SYK. And we can reproduce uh, that answer, uh, which is a complicated answer uh, from, uh, from a description, which is very similar to the Schwarzian theory Namely, it uh, is a dynamical theory of time reparameterizations with, with some particular action, which we phenomenologically found to be uh, a very rigid action uh, constrained by uh, symmetries that we at the moment don't really understand from first principles. For those of you who are familiar with the Schwarzian, uh, we are finding that um, this action uh, that we need is a DFS1 mod U1 co-adjoint orbit action, uh, and the Schwarzian is a DFS1 mod SL2 co-adjoint orbit action. Um, 
And so this is where we stand. Uh, we would like to construct uh, an EFT description uh, of, of the OTOC in this regime, which is an EFT-like kinematic regime, make contact with hydro, uh, make contact with pole skipping, and possibly uh, the dynamics of entanglement, which I didn't have time to discuss, but let me just say that uh, the butterfly velocity also plays uh, an important role in, in, in entanglement dynamics. So with that, I would like to thank you for your attention and the great questions. Okay, let's thank uh, Mark for a very nice, nice talk. And uh, maybe we can take one or two questions for now. Hi, I, I have a question. Uh, could you repeat what you say of this diff, diff S1 uh, over U1? Yes. So I don't know what your background is. Do you know that the Schwarzian is diff S1? Uh, yes, yes. I, I'm, uh, I'm asking that because this is the same group that you have if you have a JT with defects. Yes, this is exactly the same group that you have with, with JT with defects, yes. Uh, now, I don't know if you can somehow describe the dual. I mean, we tried, but I don't have anything interesting to say about it. Uh, whether you can describe this uh, large QSYK away from the strongly coupled regime uh, through some JT with the defect. Uh, wow. so the, the, the deviation from maximal chaos controls the strength of the defect parameter. This is how, so this little g is what gives you the, the parameter of defects one, one you want. But this is so far, we just found this by answer analysis. So we look at this answer, which we obtained from SYK. We look at this answer, which is inspired by how the Schwarzian computes the four point function. And then uh, we find that if we uh, posit that that uh, we have that action, then we get the right answer. But yeah, it's very okay, early. Thank you. Yeah. Does this SYK chain have um any sort of continuum limit? Um, yeah, so uh, is the lattice spacing always crucial? Yeah, so that's a very good question. And uh, it seems that it does not, uh, except in, in, the, in the maximally chaotic case. Uh, so the somehow, I mean, there are two options for lattice systems. Either uh, the lattice is, is important or it's not important. But here, already from transport, you can see that uh, you don't have a conserved momentum uh, and the energy transport is diffusive. So from there, you see that it's, uh, it, the lattice is really important and it, its effects don't go away in the IR. But at the same time, uh, many aspects of, of the SYK chain, for example, correlation fun two point functions of fermions uh, look very, very similar to what you get in ADS2 cross S2 or T2, uh, this kind of semi-local criticality form. Uh, so there are connections between uh, continuum models uh, and, and these this lattice models, but the, the, the analogy is not perfect. 